Hello, my name's Adam Burke, and I'm talking today about my research into discovering stochastic process models by reduction and abstraction. And this research was done with my colleagues, Sander Lehmans and Mo Thander Wynn. So this research is in an area called process mining. In process mining, uh, we discover process models based on the behavior of organizations in the world. And the way that we get that insight is by looking at the software systems and the vast amounts of data that are produced by those software systems, uh, particularly event logs, which is a particular shape of data that I'll talk about in a sec. Um, and then we computationally analyze those uh, event logs and uh, from those software systems to find out things about the organization. Uh, we can build formalized models of what the organization does. And Petri nets are one particularly useful structure for these models because they have both a diagrammatic form and a very solid uh, computational and formal meaning. And then with those process models, we can then look at the organizations and improve them, see what they're doing. The general idea with process mining is by looking at these, these organizations from a bottom-up data-centric view, we can get a new perspective on those organizations and find out other things. And this can complement the traditional uh, perspective of an individual in an organization, particularly the managerial perspective, a sort of top-down view of how the organization works. We can look at what's actually happening in the organization from the point of view of the information systems within it, and we can learn about that. And so we can see things that maybe aren't visible to us in formal plans and org charts and processes, process planning and so on, things like these desire paths a desire path showing where people actually walk rather than where the footpath is laid out. We can look at where people are actually doing things in the organization and systems are actually doing things in the organization, maybe for good reasons, maybe not for such great reasons. And uh, then we can improve the organization accordingly. A uh, classic design solution here being to build a path where people want to walk we can understand the problem and shape the organization accordingly. So what do I mean by an event log? An event log is a sequence of event data with a recognized case ID. So we have, rec we have to be able to distinguish activities. We have to be able to sequence them, usually with timestamps, and we have to be able to distinguish cases so the activity of one particular order in a system, for example. More formally, we have the timestamp, the case ID, and the activity. Uh, each timestamp ordered activity forms a trace. Trace is a sequence of activities. And a log is then a multi-set of traces. So that's what we're doing with process mining. And process mining has had a lot of success over the last 20 years uh, in discovering process models and analyzing them in different ways using computational techniques on large amounts of data. So uh, with these existing techniques, there's, there's quite a few process mining discovery algorithms that take those event logs and produce process models in different types. Um, there's some very successful ones. Uh, one thing that is rare uh, among those discovery techniques is explicitly modeling probability in the output model. So having some indication of weights or probabilities uh, in the, the output process to analyze and understand. Uh, when that's done, it's often done as a post-processing step and that can then inform questions like simulation or performance analysis. Uh, but this is pretty relevant information. Um, if you have a rare event, that's quite relevant information if thinking about how a process works, uh, for example. And uh, so 
in this research, we look into um, making use of stochastic information in the log itself, in discovering models, and then also outputting a probabilistic model uh, as the result and process model at the end. And for that, we, we leverage the power of stochastic Petri nets, specifically generalized stochastic Petri nets. So we came up with a framework of techniques. We call these the toothpaste miner. Um, I'll go through an example to explain what we mean by that. So let's look at the, an example of the toothpaste miner working. Uh, so if we start with this example log where we've got two similar traces, which are A, A B, we have another trace with two activities in a different order, B first, then A, we have these repeated C activities. Then the way that the toothpaste miner works is it represents these activities first in a large generalized stochastic Petri net as what's called a trace model. So it represents the traces from the log directly in a trace model in, in one large complicated net. And then it repeatedly applies rules to make that a more general model and a simpler model. So in this case, this is our starting trace model. We can identify this section of the model as uh, potentially simplified using a rule called concurrent reduction by because we see both the activities, one can follow the other, they can happen in parallel. So we perform that reduction and that captures this idea of concurrency for those two activities. Then if we look at the bottom of the model here, we can see those repeated C activities. We can represent that instead as a loop construct. And in this case, it's not just uh, because we are using generalized stochastic nets, we do a loop roll and, uh, and the resultant loop is probabilistic. It therefore has some uh, indication of the trace length implicit in the model um, in that every time the loop executes, there's some chance of it exiting, which is explicit in the model. In this case, one third. So that's loop rolls. Now we can work on more complicated logs. Real life logs are much larger. So the real life trace models and the simplification that can be achieved and the generalization that can be achieved is much more dramatic than the small example. So we can turn a, a larger log like this into something like this, which is a bit more concise, general, and generally useful for understanding what's going on. Internally, the toothpaste miner uses a view on generalized stochastic Petri nets, which is a type of process tree. It's a process tree with added weights, which we call probabilistic process trees. Uh, and that's the internal data structure view that the algorithm works with. Then when it's identifying areas to do reduction on, this is the same concurrent reduction that we saw before. It does the reduction on the tree. Um, because it works on subtrees, this allows these algorithms to be polynomial time. So as I mentioned before, these uh, probabilistic process trees are a subset of generalized stochastic Petri nets. Specifically, they're labeled, so it's GS LPNs or labeled generalized stochastic Petri nets. This is not a complete definition, but there is a complete definition in the accompanying paper. Uh, this is an example transformation rule uh, called choice folding, where we can simplify the model in a particular way. I, I, I won't go through this step by step, but I will point out that there's an explicit management of the weights of each node and the way they combine in the resulting tree. So we had uh, 24 of these rules. We identified 24 of these rules in the paper and we classify them according to this scheme. So uh, the uh, established quality dimensions for process mining 
uh, were quite useful to us in this classification. So uh, these are things like fitness and precision and so on. So we have a hierarchy of rules where uh, some rules preserve all the information in the original model. Some of them lose stochastic information, but they're able to preserve control flow, fitness, and precision. And then some are only able to preserve fitness. Then you have some, some just lossing, lossy but simplifying rules um, within this scheme. So there are some variations the toothpaste miner that are also covered in the paper, as well as the basic batch miner that I just ran through the example of. Uh, there is also an incremental miner and a version that does an optimization that involves multiple retries. So a prototype has been developed in Haskell. Uh, the rules, the use of rules and the relatively mathematical formalization was quite a good fit for Haskell pattern matching. This is open source. It's on GitHub. The URL is there and also in the paper. Uh, we then evaluated this prototype uh, against some real life and established models. This is run on a standard data set called Teleclaims. Um, in this case, uh, it's fine. It's quite a coherent description of the teleclaims process. It's to do with a call center process. And there's just a zoomed in version of it there. So uh, for the full blown experimental evaluation, we used uh, teleclaims, which I, I mentioned a moment ago. We also used two real life logs. One was to do with an incident management system and process. Another one was to do with a sepsis diagnostic and treatment process in a hospital. Uh, these are publicly available logs. Uh, we compared with two existing stochastic discovery techniques for which public implementations were available. Uh, we uh, evaluated using primarily the earth movers distance uh, for stochastic conformance. Uh, which is a, it provides a measure of similarity between models and between models and logs. Uh, we also looked at the entity count, uh, which gives an indication of simplicity. There is, and this whole uh, evaluation was also performed with K-fold cross-validation. Uh, so in the result, uh, we show there was some cases where uh, there was excellent preservation of quality by the toothpaste miner. Uh, there was some trade-off of simplicity for quality on the prototype. So overall, um, we introduced a technique for, or a framework of techniques, which do direct discovery of stochastic process models. It's based on the repeated application of reduction rules, uh, they're polynomial time algorithms. They work directly on generalized stochastic petri nets as an internal data structure using the view of a probabilistic process tree. And then they also output generalized stochastic petri nets. Um, we developed a prototype uh, that shows the viability of the technique and it, we, it also showed in experiments uh, promising preservation of quality as measured by the earth movers distance. Thank you very much for your time.